Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Effective Resume Thursday. Very glad you're with us today. It is uh, May 5th, 2022. Happy Cinco de Mayo Day. Uh, please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the Zoom recording. You're welcome to put your uh, contact information in the Zoom chat window so you can connect with other people who are on the program today. Uh, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, please just open up the Zoom chat window. Uh, you can put your questions in there. For those watching on Facebook, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I am monitoring the uh, comment field. So if you have any questions, just put them in the comment field. We will get those questions answered for you. We are going to have time to review one or two resumes today live online. If you'd like to submit your resume using the chat box, you can do so for those who are on Zoom. Uh, just uh, open up the chat box in the very bottom. You'll see a little thing called file. Click on that, and then you should be able to attach your file. Uh, you may want to um, change your uh, you know, delete your header information because your header information will, you know, all your personal contact information will show up on Facebook and YouTube. So if you want to delete that header information before you submit your resume, that would be great. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It is available on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon for 15 bucks. So if you see me in person, you can get it for $10. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The groups were around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007. And I'll tell you about our upcoming program tomorrow at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. Just want to remind everybody that your resume and your LinkedIn profile is not going to get you a job. What it will do, your resume, your LinkedIn profile will get you a phone call. Depending on how good your interviewing skills are, that's what's going to get you a job. So if you'd like to practice uh, your interviewing skills, please reach out to the pit crew. Uh, you can go to dallaspitcrew.com for more information and uh, tell you how you can sign up for one of their three sessions they do every week. So oh, there we go, dallaspitcrew at geo.com. Uh, All right. Um, so let me switch over here. Oops. Give me just a second here. Switch presentations. So our agenda today is we're going to talk about the ATS system. We're going to talk about a one-page bio. We'll talk about a master resume. We'll talk about the key components of a resume. And then if anybody would like us to look at your particular resume, we'll be glad to do so. Like I said, just delete your personal information at the very top. And we'll be glad to uh, get that out there and show that to everybody. So I'd like to start out with a little bit of humor. Your resume needs to be memorable. What's going to make your resume stand out? What's going to make that job, the, the uh, recruiter go, yep, yeah, I want to talk to this person. OK, what is it that you're going to do? So let's talk about the ATS system. Number one, parsing. When you apply online for a job and you submit a resume, what the system will do is it will go and pull information from your resume and load it into, load it into the, their computer system. There are well over 100 different ATS systems that are out there. There are a couple really big ones that most of the companies use, but there are a lot of small ones out there also. So you never know what system they're using and if your resume is going to be parsed correctly. That's why it's real important that once you've uploaded your resume and it's filled in everything, to go through and look at every field and make sure that it pulled the right information into the right field. I know, for example, there's a system out there that 
If you say John Smith MBA, you put the MBA after your name, it will say your last name is MBA and Smith is your middle name and John's your first name. So you need to go change that. Otherwise you're John MBA in their system. So you just gotta be careful because there's so many different systems that are out there. Number two, do not use any special characters or special formatting. You want your resume to be plain and simple for them to pull that information and put it into the correct fields. One of the best ways to do this is to save your resume uh, as a TXT file, because what that will do is that will eliminate all the special formatting and all the special characters and strip it down to just plain text. And then every ATS system will be able to pull that over. You do not want to use a header or a footer. Microsoft Word allows you to do that. A lot of people will put their, on the second page of the resume in the header section, they'll put their name, page two, or something, name, phone number, page two, something like that. You don't want to do that because a header, the ATS systems are not going to read that. Nowadays, people are not printing out resumes anymore. So you don't need, have to, you don't need to add your header and footer. They're looking at it on a resume, on a computer screen as a one page doc, as a one document and just scrolling through it. So there's really no reason uh, to, to put that header information because recruiters are not going to lose your papers because they don't print them out in the first place. You've got to make sure that the keywords align to the job description. This is probably the number one thing you can do in your resumes. You have got to make sure that if they're asking for X, Y, and Z on the job description, that your resume talks about X, Y, and Z. And whatever words they use on the job description, you have got to match on the resume. Very, very, very important. A great way to try to match and do that, you can go to, there's a program called jobscan.co. It is .co, not com. Uh, and you can compare your resume to a job description. What it'll do is it comes up with two different fields. One field, you'll load the job description. The other field, you'll load your uh, resume. And then it'll give you a number and say that you're 67% accurate or there's, you know, you're 85%. You're never going to be in the 90s. Don't try to do that. If you want to be in the 70s to 80 percent, best you can. Remember, when you copy that job description over, only copy the meat of the job description. Don't copy, you know, we're an EEOC, that we offer 401k benefits and health and whatever, because you don't list those things on your resume anyway. So be sure just to list the meat or the, the middle, the main part of the job description in the job scan. JobScan allows you to do five checks a month, uh, but I have heard that you can, if you clear the cash on your, uh, clear the cash on your uh, web browser, whatever you're using, you can probably get five more. I don't know if you could go in private mode or incognito mode and also be able to do it without being, and be able to do more sessions. I'm not sure if that would work. Your resume is attachment. If the system is asking for an attachment as you attach your resume, please attach your resume. It's very important because most recruiters that I talk to don't use the ATS system, the, the parsed version of the ATS system to look at your resume. If you happen to land, you know, the top 20 or 30 people and they start going through resumes, what they'll do is they'll say, oh, here's John Smith. And they'll click on his resume and look at the pretty version of your resume. They're not going to look at what the ATS system puts out in most cases. It doesn't say it happens all the time, but you know, I've talked to several recruiters and they say they're going to look at the pretty resume because the ATS system, what it prints out, isn't that doesn't look as nice. If it asks for a cover letter, attach a cover letter. Are cover letters read? 50% of the time, no, 50% of the time, yes. Recruiters do not tend to read cover letters, but a hiring manager will read the cover letter. So if you make it past the recruiter and they've sent 10 resumes to the hiring manager, there's a good chance they will read that cover letter. Okay, so I've got some advice from a uh, expert recruiter. Sarah Jacobs is a manager of business development. She's with the Thomas Edwards Group, and she's offered 
some of these bits of advice. She's been doing this for several years. She sees tons and tons of resumes for people who uh, submit jobs that they're trying to match uh, to you know, companies. So number one, never include your home address on your resume. Do not include any pictures. They're not necessary. All you need to do, and we'll show you later on in our sample resume, you want to include city, state, and zip code, and that's it. You don't include a picture on your resume because a lot of places your resume would be thrown out automatically because they want to look for people without discriminating against anybody, okay? On a one-page bio, you put your picture. On your LinkedIn profile, you have a picture, but on your resume, no pictures. Second point, create a professional name Gmail account for your job search. If you have an AOL account, that tells people you're OLD. Even if you have a Yahoo account, I have a Yahoo account, but you know, I'm in my early 60s, that tells people you're older. Everybody has a Gmail account. Uh, all the young kids, that's what everybody uses. First name, last name, if you have to add something at the end of it, you can add a number. If it is a number, no more than two digits. Uh, you could add a dot, you know, a, you know, Jeff Morris TX at Gmail. You could add, you know, TX Jeff Morris if you wanted or something, some combination to get to something. Uh, you know, if you're in Illinois, it could be IL, whatever it is, it's convenient for you to make your resume stand out, to make it professional sounding. If you're got a PMP, you know, John Smith PMP at gmail.com. Go ahead and do something like that. Be sure your voicemail box is cleaned out and has a professional outgoing message because recruiters, if they like your resume, they're going to pick up the first thing they want to do is they want to pick up the phone and call you. They don't want to send you an email. If they see, if they see a resume they like, boom, they're going to look for the phone number and they're going to call it. Make sure you have a good sounding message, okay? And be sure to check your messages. Third point, always include the entire tenure at one company on the same line as the name of the company. So let's say I, I worked for a company for 13 years and I had five different jobs there. Well, I'm going to put the first line of that job is going to say company XYZ, company X, and it's going to say from 1987 to 2000. And then underneath it, I'm going to list my job title, and then in parentheses, I'm going to put the of that particular job, and then a couple bullet points, and then the next job title, in parentheses, the job title right next to them. I'll show you an example of what we're talking about here. That's in our sample resume that we'll talk about a little bit later. Use a chronological resume versus a functional resume. 99.9% .9 of recruiters want to see a chronological re resume where you list your jobs from the most current to the one before that, to the one before that, to the furthest one back on the second page or third page, okay? Uh, and then they want to see accomplishments underneath every position. What did you succeed? What did you do well when you did that job, okay? Accomplishments sell a job, results sell. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. You want to make sure that you focus on hard skills, industry experience, and some soft skills. Put a little bit of each in. Let people know if you manage people that you're responsible for managing 10 people, that you had, you know, four supervisors, you managed four supervisors and a staff of 70. Put those kind of details in there because that gives them some relevance as far as what it is you do. Be sure to list any ERP systems, any business intelligence systems, any software systems on your resume. All right. Be sure to elaborate on your Excel skills. If you're great with pivot tables, if you're great with data structures, whatever it is, put that kind of stuff on there. Like I said, if you see it in the job description, be sure those skills and those computer skills are on your uh, resume. You want to be sure to include a brief summary instead of an objective, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. And do not use I, me, or my on your resume. I, me, and why are okay for a one-page bio, but it's not for a resume. A resume needs to be in third person. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about a resume versus a one-page bio. To me, a one-page bio is an extremely effective tool when you're networking, when you're trying to reach out to people. If you're meeting somebody at Starbucks for a coffee, if you're just reaching out to somebody to ask for advice and help, you want to send a bio because a bio uh, is, is less risky. A resume goes and says, help me, help me, I'm looking for a job, okay? But when you send a bio, you've got like a big fishing hook that you're going, oh, okay, this is what the person's done. You know, I'd like to talk to this person. This gives me a good background. So when I do talk to the person, I have a couple questions about what it is they've done. Uh, a resume focuses on work history and details, where a bio focuses on major accomplishments and expertise. This is where you're showing somebody what it is you can do. A resume is, like I said, primarily a job search tool. A bio can be used in all sorts of situations. I used a bio. I was a speaker at a conference in Chicago a couple months ago. I sent them my bio, not a resume. It sort of told people, told them who I was. So here's a sample bio. Uh, and I've got these samples. I will put them in the chat box or I'll have an email address. You can email me and I'll send these to you. So here there is a picture on a bio. There's contact information on the upper left-hand corner uh, or the right-hand corner. Uh, there's information as far as the background, a sort of a general background, professional biography, education, what the person's done, and then professional achievements and successes. So here's one way to present a bio. Here's another way. So you're doing the paper vertically, uh, horizontally, vertical instead of horizontal, so that uh, you can, maybe this stands out on somebody's desk because it's, it's formatted a little bit different. Now, this is also known because you see over on the right-hand side, target functions and target companies. You need to be very careful about target companies because if you're sending this to a company and they go, you sent this to Coca-Cola and you see that the, the top target company is PepsiCo, uh, the guy at Coke is gonna say, well, we're not a target company of yours. So you've got to be very, very careful about listing target companies. Now, if you're just sending these to friends and families and you're just sending this out wild to lots of people, then you could do something like that. But other than that, be very, very careful. Make sure that if you're talking to somebody, a particular company, that their company is listed first underneath your target companies. Uh, let me go ahead and put both of these in the chat window right now. Give me just a second here. I will add both of these formats and you can sit and download them. Let's see here. Oops. There's the first one. And there's the second one. So you can download both of those out of the chat box. Be sure to know when you save it to your local drive to do that. For those watching on Facebook, I will give you an email address that you can send this to and we will uh, send me an email and I will send those to you if you'd like them. Okay, so let's talk about a master resume for a second. Make your job search easy, okay? Because there is a 90% chance that you will be out looking for a job again in maybe two years, three years. So why do you wanna make your, you know, you can make your job search a lot easier by creating a master resume. A master resume is everything you've done since college. Be sure to include co-ops and stuff if you did co-ops or summer jobs in college that are relevant to what it is you do. You don't need to list Baskin Robbins, but you know, if you're, if you're, you know, any kind of professional experience that you had, list those. Put all the details. Your resume can be 10, 15, 20 pages long. You want to list addresses of the company, the company name, the supervisor's name, 10, 15 bullet points of accomplishments that you did at each job. All the details that you would ever want to try to remember about a job. Uh, you want to be sure to include all the names and contact of information of supervisors. You want to include all the areas of expertise, certifications, any software skills. You do all this because then when you see a job description, all you have to do is call up your master resume, save it as whatever your name documents that you're saving on your computer, and then 
go through and eliminate everything on that master resume that doesn't pertain to the job description. I'm sure everybody here has done a lot of really great things, but if they don't ask for it in the job description, don't tell them about it. Because here's the point, a recruiter has this job description. There's a good chance this recruiter could be fresh out of college, has no idea what a program manager does, but knows that I got to find somebody with these 10 skills. You want to make sure that the skills that you have on your resume match up so the recruiter can go and say, yeah, that's this person matches with what I need and then moves you on to the next pile, okay? You've done a lot of great things, but like I said, just be sure to tell them what it is they need to try to match that job description. Okay, some characteristics of a good resume. Number one, the goal of a resume is to make, the, uh, make it easy for the ATS system and for job screeners to determine if you're a good match for the job. So number one, formatting. We've sort of talked about it already, and, and we're going to go over what the formatting should look like on a resume. The overall length, two to three pages maximum for most jobs. Now, if you're applying for a government job or an education job, educational job, they want to see everything you've ever done. So if you've got your master resume, you're good to go. So, uh, but for the most part, two to three pages maximum. Most people can do it in two pages. If you're a recent graduate, you know, if you only had one job, you probably can get your everything you need on one page. So we've got a couple questions. So here's a good question is how many years, I get this question all the time. How many years should I go back on my resume? If, you know, I've been out in the workforce for 25, 30 years. How far back should I go? So we've got three options here. If you'd like in the chat window, please put in A, B, or C. Let me know what you think. So option A is you show all of your experience. Option B is you only show the most recent 10 to 15 years. Option C is show the most recent 10 to 15 years plus a section called prior relevant experience. So I've got one C in there. Anybody else want to take a stab at what you think? A, B, or C? If you'll put it in the chat window, that'd be great. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it in the comment field. All right, looks like everybody so far is agreeing on C. You know, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. I think that, you know, I know of people that have put, shown all of their experience. You know, they were in their early 60s and they happened to apply for a job. They listed all their experience because they already sort of knew what the job was and they knew the hiring manager. So they sort of submitted everything. So A would work. Uh, but personally, I like C. I think C is the best way to go. You show the most recent 10 to 15 years of relevant experience, and then you put a section called prior relevant experience. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see, Eleonora said, I had a hiring manager told me to delete 15 years from my resume. So you had too much. Here's the key, I guess here's the key about this. So if you only show 10 to 15 years, but what you did 15 or 20 years ago is relevant to what the job is that you're applying for. I think you sort of need to, you know, consider having those things on there. If it's not really relevant, that's why I say you put a section called prior relevant experience. By doing that, you list the job title, and, you know, the company name and the job title, and that's it. No dates of the company or anything like that, because what that allows you to do is if you want to tell a star story from back then, you can do it and you can say, while I worked at company Z, I did X, Y, Z. And then, you know, you don't mess up a recruiter going, wait, I don't see that on your resume. But because you list prior relevant experience or prior jobs, prior companies that you worked at, it, that gives you permission to talk about that. So let's talk about fonts for your resume. There's some fonts I like, there's some fonts I don't like. I like Arial, Calibri, and Tacoma because they're plain, they're simple, and they're easy to read. I'm not a big fan of Times New Roman, Garamond, or Calibri because that's called a serif font. If you see the little 
pieces like on the top of the new, the top of that end, there's a couple little, you know, line on the top and bottom. So I don't like to use anything. I like to use plain, simple, easy to read fonts, okay? You don't want to use, you know, wingdings. And like I said, nothing special. Remember, this is for your ATS system. You want to make it plain and simple to read. And, you know, you can, you know, your resume is typed up. You can easily change all the fonts to a different font. And you can see, well, what's easy to read? What's clear and easy? Uh, Arial Calibri, Helvetica, to me, are the ones I really, really like. You want to make sure that you've got one inch margins, right, left, top, and bottom, because white space is good. Oh, I've got my resume is three and a, is two and a half pages long, so I shrunk everything down uh, uh, to a smaller font size so I could smash it on the two pages. Don't do that. Or I changed my margins so I could change the you know change the margins to uh, so I could get more data on the two pages. Don't do that because. If your resume gets to a hiring manager, there's a good chance that the hiring manager is going to write some notes on the resume and want to highlight some things or, you know, highlight things to talk to you about when they do call you. So leave some white space. White space is good. Be very careful. You can use a bullet. The bullets I have on here, the plain bullet is fine to use. All ATS systems read that but they're not gonna do check marks or stars or little schoolhouses or telephones or anything else. So if you stick to anything, stick strictly to just the uh, little dots that you see here. Uh, be careful about bolding and underlying, italicized, no shadows, no graphics on a resume. Uh, you can't do that because an ATS system won't, it won't do as well. Now remember that the resume that you turn in for an ATS system has got to be plain and simple. But the resume that you give to a hiring manager for them to look at maybe during the interview, it can be pretty. It can have some color. It can have whatever it is that makes your resume stand out and look good that has the same information. So you can give them a nice, clean looking copy of your resume. In fact, when I've gone in for job interviews, you know, I'll say, would you like a clean copy of my resume? Because uh, there are a lot of systems when they print them out, they're not gonna print it out correctly. Be sure, do not use any text boxes, no headers and no templates, okay? Because primarily is that when somebody prints out your resume, their printer, there's a 90% chance their printer is not the same as your printer. And it's not gonna print out the same if you send them a Word document or a Google Docs. Now, if you send them a PDF file, the PDF file will always look exactly how you'd like. Remember that resumes are scanned, they're not read. So here's a, there was a study done by a university and they, they put a little eye tracker on recruiters because they wanted to see where people were looking on their resume. And you can see the red is where they looked at. So they briefly looked, you know, they're just scanning quickly to see, they're, they're not, diligently reading line for line, word for word. They're just sort of jumping around and looking at the different bullet points, the different parts of a resume. So you've got to make sure of a few things. At the beginning of every bullet point has an action verb, and I'll talk more about that in a second, and then a result, and then a little bit of a description of what it is you do. So just remember, resumes are scanned. Uh, they are not read uh, you know, a, the average resume is scanned in maybe seven to 10 seconds by a recruiter. A hiring manager, or once the recruiter finds the 10 or 15 that they like, and you're in the good pile, they're going to then maybe look at the resume in a little bit more detail. But that initial scan, seven to 10 seconds. Now, what happens if you happen to have a gap on your resume? What happens if you took off time to take care of a a parent or you're out because uh, you took time off to uh, take care of a child or if you were sick or you know you've been out for COVID for a year or two whatever it is how do you fill those gaps so there's a couple ways to do one create yourself a bullet point and I'll show you on our sample resume here in a second uh, you can create a title like community leadership uh, where some things that you did that you to help other people 
You can list consulting. If you were a consultant and you had a two month job, a three month job, six month job, and kind of a two month job, instead of listing each one of those jobs separately, to me, that would make you look like a job hopper. But if you make one category calling it consulting, and then underneath that list company name and what the project was, and you can list five or six of those, that way it shows some kind of continuity. If you took time off to go back and get a degree, you can put down continuing education, classes you've taken, classes that you've achieved in. Be sure to add a few bullet points to describe the work you were doing, consulting work, any kind of volunteering work, any kind of leadership you did, if you received any certifications, be sure to add those. And I'll point those out here in just a second. So here's a, here's a section uh, on our sample resume. You'll get a copy of this in just a few minutes. They put down community leadership and consulting. So from 2019 to present, serve as a panelist and coach for the Dallas Practice Interview Team to help job seekers with their interview skills. Also provided consulting services to a local nonprofit organization. It happened to be a church, but one of the things you don't really want to talk about on your resume is religion or politics. So just a local nonprofit covers all those kinds of things on how to prepare to conduct job interviews and how to evaluate candidates. So that gives you something that you can add to a job, uh, to your resume. Okay, so there's several key components of a resume that we wanna sort of go over, go over to. So number one, uh, your header. We're gonna talk about heading, the header of a resume. Then we're gonna talk about the summary. The next section is a key accomplishment section, which is an optional section. Unless you're in sales, a, a salesperson is going to want to have this in here probably. Uh, we'll then go to the professional experience, then previous relevant experience. And as far as I'm concerned, it's not an optional section. That's something you should put in there. Uh, then you'll list your education and your software skills. So here are sort of the differences of what we think we need to do. Uh, so your header, what you want to do is on your header, you want to use the name you like to be called, okay? So, you know, if your name is Jonathan, it's Jonathan Smith, but you like to get a go by John, put down John Smith. This is not a legal document. You want the information to be true and correct, but put down the name that you want. If you have an unusual first or last name and it's hard to pronounce, put, the, put your name and then in parentheses, spell it out phonetically for somebody. Make it easy for the recruiter to pronounce your name. I know there's some recruiters that's sad to say you'll find a good candidate, but I have no idea how to pronounce that person's name. I'm not gonna call them up on the phone and look like a fool. But if you put it in parentheses, how to phonetically sound that out, you've made it easy for the recruiter. You want a phone number, area code phone number, city state zip code, your email address and your LinkedIn address. Very important to put your email address and your LinkedIn address. Uh, you do not want your email address or LinkedIn address to be a hyperlink. So if you're using Microsoft Word to do this, it automatically makes it a hyperlink. When you do a right select with the mouse, right click and click on remove hyperlink. Some ATS systems, excuse me, some ATS systems will not read a hyperlink. Or if you had a letter like a G <coughs> below the hyperlink and that line's on there, it will confuse it and the system may not read it as a G. It may misinterpret what the email address is. So remove all hyperlinks. All right, in the next section, uh, the summary section. Here is where you want a three line, no more than three lines telling somebody what it is you do what it is you want to do. Uh, you want the title on there, the purpose should be the title of the job you're applying to if it's something you've done in the past. If you've been a business analyst in the past and you're applying for a business analyst job, put that down because that matches the job description. Once again, it's another word that will match up with the job description when the system is looking up keywords. All right. Um, if you notice in the very first line, innovative business analyst. So once again, use business analyst because that was a job title. Innovative, use an action verb. That draws somebody into a sentence. We'll talk about action verbs a lot because it's important to start out 
what it is, your, your results with actions, because it helps pull somebody into the story to read a little bit more about it. Three lines maximum. And then there's the areas of expertise. And this is where you can show some of the things you're good at. You should pull these areas of expertise from the job description. Now you wanna make sure that the top three uh, areas of expertise or either the top, you know, if I were to ask you what, if I were to ask you what are your top three areas of expertise, don't tell me improving processes, developing test plans, and customer-facing roles, because if they those were your top three, they should be at the top three listed on the very top row or on the very right hand side or the left hand side of the screen. Okay, so make sure that your top, what you consider your top three, are either on the top or on the side. All right. Now, these don't necessarily need to be computer skills, but these should be words that you find in the job description. Keywords. I mean, take that job description, you highlight it with the yellow highlighter, and we'll show you that here in just a second. Now, here's an optional section, key accomplishments. If you're in sales, you probably want to say that you achieved 120% 120, of sales in 19, 2019, or you exceeded sales target for five consecutive years or other things you should do. So you've got to be aware, uh, you know, you wanna do this if you're in sales, but once again, recruiters are gonna to wanna to know what, which job did you do this in? So be sure that any of these key accomplishments are also listed underneath the job that you have posted. Okay, so for professional experience, as we said, you wanna make sure your, your jobs are chronologically not functional. So the newest job on top, the oldest job on the bottom. You next want to be sure to talk about parallel verbs. Recruiters are looking for any reason they can to kick you out of the program to go, nope, I'm going to go on to the next candidate. If you have misspellings, you're out. A lot of recruiters, if they see a, act, a verb that's incorrectly used, you're out. So let me just sort of point these out to you. The ones in red for the current job are all current. The blue ones are past tense. Well, in the current job, there happens to be a past tense listed there. Well, yeah, because they that was a project the person worked on a few years ago, that project's over with now. So they're no longer doing that. So be sure your action verbs are correctly. But for past jobs, make sure that every action verb is in past tense, okay? This will get you kicked out from being from, from a, uh, by a recruiter. You want to make sure, you want to include a one-line description of the company. So that's what you see here circled. Uh, just one line saying what the company does. You know, I've been doing this for 13 years now, and there's not a Friday that goes by that one of my, somebody in the Friday group lists a company that I have never, ever heard of. I mean, the company changed names, or it's a new company that moved to town, or whatever. So put a one line description and help people out. Now, you know, if you work for IBM or if you work for AT&T, okay, well, people know what, you know what that is, but I would still list, you know, a Fortune 50 company, do list something. But, you know, for any smaller company, tell people what it is you do. And if you want, I've actually on mine, I added a second line to say who I report it to. And if I supervise, if I manage any people, I put that on that next line saying that, you know, report it to the owner of the company, uh, supervised six, super, or, you know, six supervisors and 70 employees reported to me or something like that. You want to be sure to limit the number of bullet, uh, bullets underneath each job. Five to six at the most. Uh, the farther back you go, four, three to four, two to three, one to two. Uh, you know, as you go back, job, 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 because number one, as I said before, the bullet points have got to relate to what's in the job description. If it has nothing to do with the job description, don't list it. You can talk about it as a star story when you're in an interview, if it's something that comes up, but you want to make sure that the resume matches the job description so that somebody will call you up. And then be sure to focus on results. This is very, very important because you have got to make sure that 
you know, just don't tell me what your job was. Don't, you don't want these bullet points to read like a job description. You want to tell me that you reduced data migration time by 90% and increased stakeholder confidence by delivering basic program, blah, 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 blah. Okay, give me a result. Give me some way to, to know what it is you did, how you did it. I remember once I had somebody who was just, they were an admin, they answered the desk, they answered the phone at the front desk. You know, I don't have any, I don't have anything that I can show. I said, well, I got a question. So how many phone calls do you think you get a week? Oh, four or 500 calls a week. I said, okay. And how many people you, do you send those to? Well, there's 28 people who work here. All right, well, that's a, you've now showed me, you've now got something. I answer the phone four to 500 times a week distributing the phone call to 28 different uh, people here on site. You've quantified what you've done. You've told me what it is you can do for me if I'm looking for somebody with that kind of call volume or tell me what it is you can do. Your professional experience details. As we said, you want to limit your bullet points to five or six per job. The bullet points have to focus on results. We just got done talking about that. Results sell, very, very important. Your bullets should not sound like a job description, okay? I, I see so many resumes and that's happened. That's what happens. So one of the things you can do with your bullet points is play the so what game. This is a great little game here. So here's a, here's a uh, sample that was done. Guided next phase brand evolution for a multimedia artist managed film production and publishing. Yeah, so what? That's a job description. That's not a result. That doesn't tell me what it is you did. So the question was, so what? The answer from the person was, well, this increased my business opportunities, which led to 10 new commissions for my client. So after rereading the, rebranding re the message, we said, okay, increased business opportunities, including 10 new commissions for my client based on developing a full social media and PR strategy. So now you've told somebody what it is you've done with results. Results sell, as I said before. All right, so what happens if you have multiple roles at one company? This is one of the things uh, Sarah talked about in her tips, uh, is that you want to be sure to list the company name once with a full range of dates. So you can see the very top there, Company B, City State, 2010 to 2014. So you list that, and that's right justified. Okay, and it's a small information technology consulting firm. Then what you do for the smaller job, the jobs you had while you worked there, is you were a business analyst, in parentheses, 2012 to 2014, system engineer, 2010 to 2012. This then shows a line of group progression. If you had put those dates over on the right-hand side, it could have made you look like a job hopper. Oh, the person was only there for two years. Oh, they only were there for two years, two years, two years. So <coughs> this gives you a way to show longevity at a place. So what do you do if your company has changed the name? This has happened in lots of different companies are out there. So you have two options. Number one, you give the name of the current company followed by the old name, XYZ company, formerly ABC company. Or you can give the, the name of the old company first, ABC company, acquired by XYZ in 2008. <clears throat> we had uh, a member had a candidate who worked for a company and the company, the name I knew was Campbell Soup. Anybody here not know what Campbell Soup is? We all know what Campbell Soup is. I mean, it's been around for years. Well, the Campbell Soup plant was purchased by company A and then company A sold it to company B. Well, I never knew what those numbers were. I they're working for some X, XYZ company who knows what it is. So I told them, List Campbell Soup acquired by the name of the company in whatever, because that's a name that stood out. That's a brand name that I recommend that I would recognize. So just as a hint, probably the best way to do something like that. Uh, Mike asked a great question here. What if a contractor and then hired by the employer sometime later? So at the time you get hired by the employer, I would just change your resume at that point to put down the employer's name and underneath it, 
you know, you're going to have, here's where you work for the employer. And then the next job title is you work as a contractor through XYZ company uh, in parentheses and those dates, but listed under one main job because primarily it was under one main job. Now, if you're filling out the online app, if you're filling out a, uh, a job, if you're filling out a, a, a um, job application, you'd have to break that up into two different jobs because legally you worked for two different companies if you were getting paid by the recruiting company and then paid by the company when you got hired. But if the contracting, you know, or contracting company, same way. So that would have to be two different jobs. I would pair the two of those together. All right, education and software skills, you wanna list your degree. Uh, you don't need to list when you got your degree, unless it's like in the last three or four years and you're proud and you got your MBA and you wanna you know, let people know that's something you recently got. Uh, but just the degree with the major was city school state. You can put that all in one line if you'd like, just to make it, uh, just to save a line if you like. And then list those software skills. You know. Uh, if they if they list software skills on the job description, list them on your resume. Very, very important. And if you don't have a degree, what do you do? I would list school, city, state. So if you work, if you went to a school for a couple of years, but you didn't finish, put down the area of concentration. And then in parentheses, you put down X number of hours, you know, 45 hours, 55 hours, whatever it is. Just list it that way so people know, you know, there have been plenty of people who've gotten hired and then gotten fired a couple of weeks later because when they went to check, they didn't really graduate from that. I mean, there was a famous football coach at uh, Notre Dame that got fired because he didn't list his stuff and didn't list his stuff correctly. Okay, so here is a job description and here's a resume. So the first thing you wanna do is get your get a yellow highlighter and over on the right, Left-hand side is a job description. And what you wanna do is you wanna find what's important on one side. So here you're gonna see business analyst, that's a job title. So the person made sure it showed up twice on the resume. Then they went and said, okay, business requirements. And they made sure those same words showed up in the header information as being important. Improving processes. So they made sure that was one of the areas of expertise that they showed cross-functional, just being sure that those things are the same. You know, they talked about Agile, Scrum, Visual Studios. They made sure those words brought over or listed on your resume. So Agile and Scrum, yes, they are a computer, you know, they're a software skill, but they're also, that's also a methodology uh, of how to do things. So that's why it's, a, it's listed as an area of expertise. You know, multiple sources user manuals, make sure those keywords are over there. Um, so you can see how those kinds of things, oops, so you can see how those kinds of things all match up. The more keywords you match, the better you're gonna be in your job description. All right, so a couple of things to remember. Number one, keywords are very, very important. I said it's probably the most important thing is the object is for you to match the keywords of the job description. Make sure those are on your resume. If you were the director of human resources and you're applying for a director of talent acquisition, you want to change your job title from on, you know, at that particular job on your resume, change it to director of talent acquisition. And then you can put it in parentheses or, you know, put one and then list the other one right next to it so that it shows that it does both because people go, no, we're looking for a TA person. We're not looking for a, a recruiter. So, you know, just to make sure those kinds of things match up. Remember that resumes are scanned. A recruiter is going to spend seven to 10 seconds the first time through going through that pile of resumes or that number of resumes they have on the computer to pick the ones that are most important. A resume will only get, will not get you the job. As I said at the beginning of this call, a resume only gets you a phone call. Your LinkedIn profile, no matter how good your LinkedIn profile is, only gets you a phone call to get that job, it's depending on how well you practice your interviewing skills. So when you get that phone call, here's a great tip. Ask them, oh, thank you very much for calling. So what was it about my resume that made you pick up the phone and call? Ask them that because then you know what to talk about or what's important to them. 
And you want to be sure to ask that to everybody you speak to. If you, if you interview with five different people, I'd ask all five people, so what is it about my resume of, was of interest? And, you know, wh what do you need me to do to be successful here over the next, you know, in the next six months or the next year? Because everybody you interview is going to come from a little bit different point of view. So I just love the question. When you get that phone call, oh, thank you for calling. I really appreciate the call. Can you tell me what was it about my resume that made you reach out? So I really, really appreciate those kinds of information. All right, well, nobody submitted a resume. So I guess we won't look at somebody's resume today. Um, let me stop sharing here for a second. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, you're welcome to unmute your mic and uh, ask away if you'd like. Hey, Jeff. Yes, Mike. <clears throat> I had... Uh... I went to a transition company after uh, I was laid off in October, LHH, which you're familiar with. And uh, they wanted me to put my military experience on there. But when you, when you put it on your resume, it's one thing. But when you put it on the application, you have to put a date. And, you know, it's quite a long time ago I, I did that. So uh, is it really worth putting it on there if it shows, you know, 30 years ago or 20 years ago? You know... Yeah, that because um, it's not gonna let you go forward unless you put those dates in there. <laughs> right. All right. So my thought of my thought about I mean, yes, I'd want to list military because a lot of people are looking for people who have military backgrounds because you bring us a, a certain you bring a difference to the table. I mean, because we know that you have been trained a certain way and it's beneficial. Um, people are gonna figure out how old you are. They may not figure it out on the job application. But when they call you in for an interview, they'll go, oh, oh, I didn't realize you were this old. Or they'll look at your, your profile on LinkedIn and go, oh. Or they'll see your picture on a Zoom call and they'll go, oh. You know, they may well, I Googled, see Yeah, I Googled my name yesterday and it showed my age. So. Right. So, <laughs> you know, no it's out there. And believe me, if I'm going to bring you in for an interview, I'm going to Google you. And I'm going to look you up on LinkedIn. And I'm going to see if you're on Facebook. You know, and, you know, some people will look and see if you have a Twitter account or an Instagram account just to see what you're posting and stuff. So, uh, you know, I don't do Twitter and Instagram, but if I was interviewing LinkedIn and Google would be the two places that I go because I want to know what's out there about you. So if I guess if what you did in the military was important, I think you could do it. I think the other thing you could do. You know, on a job application, maybe you leave it off, but when you submit your resume, it's on your resume. Right. Because people, you got to remember that most people who, most of the recruiters who look at the ATS system, they don't look at the data that gets put into the ATS system. They're using that parsing is strictly for the computer to try to do that match. So when they when their names pop pop up, here's candidate number one, number two, number three, according to the way they sourced it, they're going to pop open the resume because it's going to look nicer. So put it on your resume. I guess leave it off a job description. I'll leave it off a, a job application, you know, unless they happen to ask, you know, or if you or if you know that they're looking for people who have a military background. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. You're welcome. Anybody else? Any other questions? All right, let me yes. just share a couple more screens here. If you, oh, you know what? I did not include, well, let me just do it this way. Uh, let me pop into the chat box a the sample resume. Let's see here. Oop, not that one. Here is the sample resume. And then I'm also going to include for everybody a sample T cover letter. And I've got two different T cover letters I can show you. Uh, I'll pop them both here in the chat window. So they're both now in there. Uh, if you would like to get a copy of the, if for those on Facebook or if you were not able to download these sample T cover letters, you are welcome to send me a resume, send me an email at resume at careerdfw.org, resume at careerdfw.org. Send that. Let me know what you're looking for, that you'd like the effective resume documents, and I will reply back to those. 
Uh, I tend not to get to that email account on the weekends, but the, I will get it back to you uh, just, you know, as, as soon as I see it. As soon as I see the email, I'll get them back to you. Uh, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Hopefully you'll join us. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have open forum the first Friday of every month at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meeting. We are going to be doing open forum. We'll talk about whatever questions you have about your job search. Uh, so if you have any questions you have, any discussion, if you'd like to offer your opinions, facts, and figures, you're welcome to uh, join us and uh, do that tomorrow morning. Next Tuesday, for LinkedIn Tuesday, Terry Sullivan will be with us to talk about how to create a LinkedIn brand that tells your key contacts, who you are, what you do, and how you can help. This event will not be recorded to view after the event, so if you do want to watch Terry's presentation, you do need to watch it live next Tuesday. Next Wednesday, we uh, hopefully will have a uh, practice interview. Watch somebody being interviewed for a practice interview. It's been slim pickings the last couple of weeks. So we've had to show some other things, but if you'd like to schedule an interview, please reach out to dallaspitcrew.com and it will only be on Zoom and there'll be no recording to watch it after the event. Next Thursday being the second Thursday of the month, we'll talk all about networking. Uh, next week, our title is we're going to talk about informational interviewing, networking and informational interview with Walt Glass. So uh, you can join us next Thursday for that class. This session has been recorded. It is going to be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. On the Career USA YouTube channel, click on playlist. Otherwise, you'll see over 300 videos just sort of in a random order. I'm not sure how Facebook or how YouTube does that. But if you click on playlist, every video that I upload goes into a different category. So the resumes, interviewing, LinkedIn, you'll see this. there's seven categories. You can pick whichever one you like. Um, and then click on view full playlist. Don't click on the video. And then up will come a list of all the different dates and titles. So you can go back and watch any video that you'd like to watch at your convenience. Today's video will be uploaded. It'll take about two hours for YouTube to get it uploaded, but you'll be able to watch it uh, later tonight. If you're not receiving emails about our workshop, if you heard about us someplace else, please, if you'd like to join the Career USA mailing list, you're welcome to do so. Just send an email to Career USA, the plus sign subscribe at groups.io. You will never be spammed, but what you will get is the title of the day, the topic of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day. That way you can grab your lunch or grab your breakfast and join us, open the email and get right to the Zoom account. So if you know somebody who's unemployed, maybe who's not participating or know somebody else in job search, please, please, please reach out to them and let them know about what we're doing. Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. All of our speakers are volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Everything I've done over the last 13 years has been to help you land your next great opportunity. Uh, this is my little charity to give back to help people out there in their job search. Please consider making a donation. Uh, that's how we survive. That's how we keep the charity going. So thank you for joining us today, everybody. Have a great Thursday afternoon and Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning. If not, we'll see you one day next week.